So this is number is only going to get worse. 67 trillion. That is four times as much as our total government, federal government debt that has people scared of that. That's really, if you can figure a way we can retire at 63 to 65 and not, and fund that $67 trillion and growing, then great. My second thing is everybody I know that's retired and most people are bored. I have no intentions to retire until my health fails. I'm going to work till 75, 80, whatever. I want to do something. I want to maybe work less. I maybe want to do something that's more, you know, fun to me or, or more challenging or something I value more. Yeah, you might want to go teach uh, you know, economics. You might want to go to oil paint. You might want to, you know, uh, you know, run a gardening school. You might want to take more vacations, yeah. but you know. Or start your own charitable foundation. There's many things to do, but this is a reality that America and all countries around the world are not facing. And you, you see Japan's debt uh, just keeps going up and up and up and up and up because they're t 11 years ahead of us. Japan has had their bubble burst ahead of us, real estate stocks. They've had this coma economy with stimulus that never turns around because they don't rebalance the debt and don't let the bubble burst and let things because see, one of the problems is people old or young are facing unaffordable education, unaffordable health care. People investing for the future are going to get no returns because stocks and real estate have bubbled up so much. If we don't correct sure. these imbalances, which the free market system does very, very well on its own, then we're not going to have sure. a future. But I mean, look, there's a destructiveness to it. And I go back to the Democrats, and I've never been a partisan person, but they've really turned into a virulent form of cancer right now. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just stating the facts here. They're not like Australia or Switzerland saying, bring us your skilled workers, bring us your brains. They want now welfare moms, unaccompanied kids, people with mental illness, people with handicaps to bankrupt the system. And they admit they want to bankrupt it to like uh, uh, Ezekiel Emanuel said, we want to wreck everything to take it over. There is a piratical nature here where they want to ride these crises to dictatorial power. Your take on that statement? Well, you know, I, I'll just back up and say, look, we have to face this problem. It takes a transition. Germany's already raised their retirement age from 65 to 67, and, and they're older than us. That's no, why I know, but they're not even trying to replace people with, with, with hard workers now. Why would the Democrats want the worst immigrants out there? Right, exactly. We, we let... We let the, the least educated come across the border freely, and then we turn down people with master's degrees that come over here from China and India. Um, so again, it's the opposite of, of what Australia does. Australia has, has actually has, uh, the next generation is larger than the baby boom generation in Australia, Norway, and Sweden, and a handful of smaller countries because they've encouraged births and or they've encouraged high quality immigration. We have to do that. We're doing the opposite. We have to stop committing suicide politically and economically. Let's go to Dan in Canada has a question for Mr. Dent. Go ahead. Hello. Yep, you're on the air. All right. Hey, uh, how you doing? Uh, first time caller. Welcome. Um, basically, I have a question. I was listening to some other uh, economic um, people talking, and the people that don't have money, let's say, to say buy gold or silver or whatever, like the people that are working hard, just trying to get by day to day, pay their bills, and raise their kids or families as best they can. Uh, they were saying to go into something like, for example, like, say, buy bottles of alcohol or cartons of cigarettes and just stockpile them because they could be used as bartering tools later on. Yeah, yeah, I've always told people like bourbon bottles and shotgun shells, things that you know people will want or, you know, canned goods or something. Makes sense. Gold and silver keep going down because the reality is we're in a deflationary environment. When you have asset bubbles, when stocks and financial assets bubble up, driven sure. by debt bubbles. Sure, I think he's asking how to be more when successful now. Get deflation. Money gets destroyed. Cash is king. And like you say, just basic things that you can barter with will be much better than gold and silver. I see gold going to 700 or lower and silver going to 5 to $10 or lower. And, and I've been, I, we got people out of silver at $49. In late April of 2011, the day of the top. We well, it's still a wild card in my view, but we got to look at all options. Expanding on that, though, I think he's mainly asking, how can he be more successful? You've got to see how trends are moving. You might have to move to a boom town and know the business in the niche where you can charge more and be more successful and then force yourself to expand and duplicate your skill. Because it's almost like you can't stay small now 
and really gain a bunch of wealth in most cases. You've got to duplicate that skill you've got in an area that is a boom area. And so what did our ancestors do before when something was bad? They migrated. And so, I mean, it's coming to a time where you can't sit where you've always been. You've got to move around and, and, and try things and be entrepreneurial. Mr. Dent? Yeah, you know, and real quickly, yeah, this is the time to become an entrepreneur because jobs are going to get slaughtered when this happens. But it's also, there's in demographics, there's always something booming. As the baby boomers age, if I were working for a car dealer, I would switch to an RV dealer. RVs are going to have the greatest boom in history. Healthcare, nursing homes, um, vitamin companies, things like this. Yeah. These things are going to boom with the aging of the baby boomers. So you want to also orient your job or your skills to a sector that still has good demographic trends, or like you say, towns where people are moving to. Texas is a great state. I mean, it's got the strongest migration and immigration uh, of any country, and it's created the most jobs. So so if you're in Texas, you didn't have a bubble in real estate like like the coast did, so you're not gonna get cream, and and, and you've got better demographics. So so yes, it, you know, we've got a free newsletter, uh, Economy and Markets at harrydent.com. We give people a lot of information. You do. And Thank you so much. We're going to talk to you soon. HarryDent.com. Folks, go check that out. This I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. The Genesis we got the Obama supporters coming up. Radio Network.